you're gonna learn how to blur a background and add depth of field in Photoshop, we're gonna be looking at the depth blur filter inside the new neural filters in Photoshop. I'm gonna show you how this filter works, how to overcome its limitations like the inaccurate selections, the halo effects, and even show you how to manually add depth blur using the generated depth maps. So let's get started. Hello everyone and welcome back to another Photoshop tutorial. So to follow along with this tutorial and have access to the latest version of the depth blur, make sure you are on the latest version of Photoshop and to access the depth blur filter, you're gonna go to filter, then neural filters. So as you can see, there are many new filters that you can try out on your own, like skin smoothing and colorizing black and white images, but today we're going to be looking at the new depth blur filter so when you open this for the first time you might need to download the filter before so all you have to do is you click on the download button and then click here to enable the filter now photoshop is going to analyze the image select the foreground and then blur the background so as you can see photoshop did a really good job right off the bat and if we increase the blur strength from here, you'll be able to see the selection a little bit better. So you just saw how fast and easy was that. Photoshop automatically detected the subject and blurred the background for us. Before this, we used to manually have to make selections and separate the subject from the background and then we can blur the background and it takes a lot of time. So I think this feature is really amazing and it's going to be very helpful for a lot of people. All right, so let's take a look at the settings on the right hand side here. So sometimes when you apply this filter, you might not have the focus subject automatically checked. And if I uncheck this option, as you can see, we didn't get the best results on isolating our subject. So make sure to click on the focus subject checkbox to exclude the subject from the selection. And I believe this is using the same technology behind the select subject feature in Photoshop. So the first thing that we have here is the focal range slider. And if I increase the value, you'll see that the range of the blur is going to be less visible in the foreground right here. So this is also a very good feature that will mimic the depth blur of a camera lens. So what I usually do is increase the blur strength all the way. And then you'll be able to see the result a little bit better when you are moving the focal range slider. So if I increase the focal range all the way, you will see that Photoshop is now detecting objects that are a little bit further in the background and it's now more focused than these objects in the background. So for this case, I'm gonna keep the focal range to about 30. And by the way, each time you make a change, Photoshop is gonna take a little bit of time to process the image and this is actually much faster than it used to before before it had to re-upload the image to the cloud and process it each time you make a change so this is a nice addition okay so moving on we have a haze slider and it's gonna add some haze effect in the background which can be useful in some situation so in this case we're gonna keep this one to zero we also have a temperature slider which can help you add more warmth to your image. There's also a tint, a saturation, and a brightness sliders, which in my testing, I found that they act a little bit differently than each other. So for example, this temperature slider is affecting the background, but if I move the saturation slider, you will see that it's affecting the background as well as the subject. And by the way, this filter is still in the beta state, so keep in mind this might change in the future when this filter is fully stable and released. So in this case, we're gonna keep these sliders to zero. And there's a new addition, which is the grain slider, which I see that it can be very useful for many people because when you add depth of field to a background, you will lose the grain in the original image. So this will help you bring back some of that grain in the background. And if you want to see the before and after, you can click on this icon. So in this case, we're just going to add a small value of grain. And the next checkbox that you have here is the ability to output a depth map only. And we're going to talk about this later. 
So if we take a close look at our subject, you will see that are some of the some parts of the subject are not properly selected, like the left side of the bike and some here in the background. And to fix that, you have a couple of tools on the left hand side here. And the first one is the subtract from the selection and in add to a selection. So now we can take the subtract from the selection tool and you can control its size the same way as the brush tool. So now we can paint on this area to exclude it from the blur area. And you might want to uncheck this checkbox to hide the mask overlay. So I'm just going to paint on top of these areas to restore these parts of the bike. And also the add to selection tool will work as expected. It's going to bring back those areas that you removed. You can also hold Alt to switch back between these tools, just like in the Select and Mask panel. Alright, so once you are done with your editing, you can go here to choose an output option. And if I click here, you will see that you have a couple of options. And the first one is to apply these to the current layer, which is destructive. You can export it to a new layer, a new layer with a layer mask. And my favorite one is the smart filter. So once you choose this and click OK, it's going to automatically convert the layer to a smart object and apply these changes as a smart filter. So this means that it is non-destructive and we can always go back to this filter by double clicking here. And that's how the depth blur filter works. Now let's talk about the issues that you might face and how to fix them. So I have another example here that I applied the depth blur filter to and first of all Photoshop did a great job on selecting the subject and blurring the background but the problem here if I zoom in and show you the before and after there is some halos here on the edges of our subject and this is a common problem when you try to blur a background and you separate your subject from the background you blur the background and then you add your subject on top of it now the original copy of the subject will be blurred and it's going to leak outside the selection. So to fix this, I'm going to first of all apply the changes to a smart filter and then I'm going to click OK. And what I'm going to do is duplicate this layer and then I'm going to delete the smart filter from this layer. Now you can go to select then subject. So now we have our subject selected and you can take your time here and use the refine edge tool to make a good selection of the subject but in this case this selection is good enough for this example now what i'm going to do is add a layer mask and now we have a copy of only our subject so now we can add a new layer underneath our subject and then i'm going to click on s to take the clone stamp tool i'm going to increase my size a little bit and make sure your sample is set to current and below and now I'm going to simply sample from an area from the background that is similar and paint here underneath our subject. And as you can see, by doing this, we are now removing that halo effect. So this is before and after and as you can see that looks much better so you can use this technique to remove any halo effects from this depth blur filter another problem that you might face using the depth blur filter is having inaccurate selections so i already applied the depth blur filter to this image and if i zoom into the subject you will see that a lot of areas of the subject that are not included and also some areas of the background that should be out of focus but they are in focus and this might not be a big problem if we have the tools to further refine our selection like we have in the select subject panel. But unfortunately, this is still limited on what you can do to refine the selection. So sure, we have the subtract from the selection tool and we can use this tool to manually add more areas to our selection like this part of the hair here. But we also have this part of the background that should be out of focus. And you might think you can use the add to selection tool. 
but you can't if you for example if i try to brush on top of this area it will not do anything this tool will only restore the areas that you already removed so in this case we can't do anything to fix this unless we do it manually and that's where the depth maps come in very handy So if I scroll all the way to the bottom, you'll see that we have an output depth map only. And if I enable this option, as you can see, Photoshop will create a depth map for you. And we can use this along with the lens blur filter to manually add depth blur to our background. So the idea here is the darker areas will have less blur and the brighter areas will have more blur. And you can see that in the depth map, Photoshop created multiple levels of contrast to control the blur. Also, the selections in this depth map is not perfect, and we're going to be modifying this in a little bit. So before we export this depth map, I'm going to use the Add to Selection tool to remove the areas that we just modified. Next, you're going to make sure to select New Layer and click OK to output this depth map to a new layer. OK, so before we use this depth map, we need to make a better selection of the subject. And you can use something like the pen tool to make a perfect selection of your subject. And that's what I did and it's in the channels panel. Now I can control or command click on the selection to load it. Click on RGB to go back to the RGB mode. Then go back to layers. And now I can turn back on the depth map layer. Then fill this selection with black. Now if I click on control or command H to hide my selection you will see that there are some areas that we need to remove and we can easily do that using the brush tool so i'm going to take the brush tool and what i'm going to do is first of all bring back the selection and i'm going to click on Control shift i to invert the selection now let's hide the selection again and using the brush tool we can sample from a nearby area and then i'm going to paint on top of it with the low flow and opacity All right, so now we can bring back the selection, then click on Control or Command D to deselect. And since the blur will not be visible on the dark areas, we can make the foreground darker as well so it doesn't have blur. So we can also do that using the brush tool. And this time, I'm going to change the blending mode to overlay. And I'm going to paint with black with a low flow in the foreground. Alright, so this way the blur will not be visible in the foreground and it will gradually increase in the background. So now we have the depth map ready. We need to convert this to a channel before we use it in the lens blur filter. So now what you need to do is to go back to channels. And I'm going to click on the blue channel for example. And now we need to duplicate this channel by dragging it to the new channels icon. Then double click on it to rename it and I'm going to call this one depth map. Okay, click on RGB to go back to RGB mode. Go back to layers and now we can hide this depth map layer. I'm going to select my main layer. And now to apply the lens blur, we're going to go to filter, blur, then choose lens blur. Now the first thing that you need to do here is to choose the depth map as the source. And as you can see, it is automatically selected. If it's not for you, make sure to select it using this drop down. And now as you can see, the lens blur filter is using this depth map to control the blur areas. Also, make sure the blur focal distance is zero. So if I increase this all the way, you will see now the subject is out of focus. So we're going to make sure that the blur focal distance is to zero. And now all we have to do is to play with these sliders to get the desired results. So using the radius slider, you can control the amount of blur. So in this case, we're going to add about 70. And that looks good for this image. And you can also control the specular highlights, add noise if you need to, and so on. Now we can click OK. And as you can see, the selection now is much better than the depth blur filter. 
So using this technique is a great way to have perfect selections or if you want to have total control over the blur areas. So that's how to blur a background in Photoshop. Let me know if the new depth blur was useful for you in the comments. And if you enjoyed this tutorial, make sure to subscribe and turn on the notification bell so you don't miss out on new tutorials like this. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in my next tutorial.